times that we share High in the Rockies With snow in our hair Memories of you They brighten up my day When you're not with me And things don't go my way to Old Faithful. I'm your host, Matt Trout. My thanks to Hagerty's Music Work. My thanks to the incomparable Johnny Hastings for calling me at about 10 o'clock this morning while I was at work <laughs> and saying, hey, Tom Norton's in town. Do we want to do it? And I said, yes, we want to do it. Absolutely. My thanks to Tom Norton for thinking of me when he came to town. Ladies and gentlemen, in guitar circles and other circles, we talk about gift versus practice. And this man practices a lot, but he also, I hope you don't mind me saying, you have a gift, ah, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank the you. incredibly talented Tom Nolton. Thank you. What man. else do I say in the beginning? Remember my sponsorship with Black Coast Blend Espresso for a convenient location in Rapid City. Follow Haggerty's Music Works on YouTube. Follow me on YouTube, Matthew Trath. Thank you for your support. Back to you, sir. How in the hell are you? I'm great. Great. Nice little drive today from Fort Collins. Figured I'd come up to the big old city, see some old friends, and play a little music with my good friend who you mentioned in the beginning there, Mr. Johnny Hastings. Nice. It doesn't matter on the internet, but how was the drive? It was awful. It was awful? <laughs> yeah. was it? Did you hit some bad weather? No, no weather. It's just long. It's just a long it's drive. Long. But uh, you got to get used to that when you're a bluegrass music man. So. Hey, that should go on a t-shirt right there. <laughs> so tell us about you uh, growing up and your musical influences and all of that. Yeah, um, I was born in Sheridan, Wyoming to my uh, mother and father, of course. Well, I'll be damned. Jeff and uh, Deb Knowlton. Okay. Um, my dad was a musician, touring musician as I was growing up, so I kind of grew up around it. And uh, he is my biggest inspiration, of okay. course. And um, yeah, I grew up around music. I started playing guitar when I was about 14. Moved down to Arkansas with my dad, and he showed me uh, showed me uh, the House of the Rising Sun. That was the first song that he showed me. Okay. And, and then after that, he uh, put me through the School of Bluegrass, which is a lot of one, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> so backing up a little bit, number one for a. Uh, a guy in the musical family, you started somewhat late. Yeah, I mean... I, Did you at first not... You weren't really interested for a while? I was. I just played different things. I mean, starting out as a little guy, just drums and stuff like okay. that. And then All right. my first instrument that I took seriously, believe it or not, was the bagpipes. Hey, <laughs> do you still play bagpipes? I still got them. I haven't busted those out in quite some time, though. Uh -huh. It's been a minute. Could you play Amazing Grace? Oh, a hundred times in my sleep. Which is, 
I sometimes wonder if that's the only song the bagpipes are capable of playing. It's the only one they should play. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a slight diversion. Growing up with a touring musician father, you came to realize perhaps how much they're gone. Yeah. And did you think, maybe I don't want that when you were a kid? Um, that's a really good question. I really enjoy being on the road. Yeah. I get to see see things and, and go places that I wouldn't have picked to go. Right. And like, it's it's just lovely. Well. I, I really do like it. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, back to 14, was there a guitar in the corner of the house that you picked up? There was. Or? My dad was left-handed, so a lot of his instruments were rigged up left-handed. Well, come on the show, <laughs> sir. <laughs> And uh, he had this old Alvarez Regent in the corner that was strung up right-handed. Okay. And we lived out in the middle of nowhere. Sure. It's like maybe 15, 20 miles of town, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I got pretty bored out there, so I told him one day after he came in from work, I said, Dad, you think you could show me some things on the guitar? And that's that's where it started. He showed me that House of the Rising Sun, and that's, that's where it started. Right. <laughs> So then, did you play mostly on the Alvarez, it was strung up right-handed? Yeah, I did. I played on that for a couple years. And then um, when I was 16, my brother Jeffrey bought me my first real guitar, which was a Martin D21 Special. Shout out to Jeffrey. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And that, uh, that guitar actually came out of this very shop. Okay, yeah. all right. Was that with input from you, or was that a completely surprise gift? Well, Tony Rice, it, it was it was a huge surprise. Okay, all right. I never, I didn't see that one coming. I came home from school one day, and he was sitting in this chair playing guitar, and I was thinking, man, that guitar sounds really good. <laughs> I got to looking more, and I'm like, holy cow, he's got a Martin. And then he smiled at me and handed it to me. And, really? And yeah. Huh. I, uh, very, very thankful for that. That was a... Uh, a day to remember for sure. Sure. So you mentioned Tony Rice briefly. Just for a second. Yeah. Was that the guitar that he was playing at that time? Uh, Tony had his um, D28. It was a 1935 D28. Okay. And that's what I really wanted. Right. But uh, that's like a $150,000 guitar. Now. They also don't always have them in Haggerty's. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. If you, the viewer at home, are wondering who Tony Rice is, you now have some YouTubing to do. Homework. And shame on you, actually. Well, go ahead and say it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you played, you got a Martin, and you played, at what point did you begin performing? Um, started out with open mics and stuff around like 15, 16 okay. years old. Then uh, I wound up getting into a couple of bars that looked the other way, and I'd play solo shows hey, there and stuff. Hey, nice. Yeah. And uh, so since 16, I've made it my job to be a musician, and it's been pretty rough goings. Yeah, <laughs> it certainly can be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that will say, well, you know, get a job, uh, and... You can do that, but if you're going to try hard enough, then there's other people that say, well, you're not trying hard enough at the musicianship. But sometimes it can just be a hard slog, even for a talented, hardworking person. Yeah, coming up, I mean, like like I said with the age thing, I had a lot of people turning me away. With, right. Well, get out of here. You're not even old enough to be here. Right. Stuff like that. So that made me try even harder. <laughs> and, I, and I should point out, we have learned in the last two years that it can be a tough old slog even for a guy with a regular job. Sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, so, uh, did you go to college anywhere? I didn't go to college, but I went and partied at a college. You went and partied? Hey, we are kindred <laughs> spirits in that regard. They tell me sure. I had a good time, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I've been told I've had several great times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, were you in any bands in college? No. No? no. Um, mostly stayed, uh, did solo things, and then uh, around 18, 19, I moved over to Rapid for a little bit. Okay. Started getting into the scene that they had around here. Started playing around with a couple electric bands and stuff like uh -huh. that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Had you played electric? much at all 
I was barely getting into it, and um, I'm gonna bring in, drop his name again. Johnny Hastings really, really showed me a, a lot about the differences between acoustics and electric sure. guitars. Yeah. And how, how to, to play them. Showed you how to put your foot on the monitor. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's an important skill. You Just know. rocking out. Yeah. Right. So, um, do you, let's talk about your current band that you're in, Woodbelly. Sure. Which is a bluegrass band. Bluegrass is your first love and yeah. your biggest love. Yeah. I think it's safe to say. Yeah, I absolutely love bluegrass. And, and, and you're very good at it <laughs> also. So this band, you're the guitarist. Are you the vocalist as well? Um, front man duties are split up between me and the mandolin player, okay. uh, Mr. Chris Wiest, who started the band um, with Craig Patterson five or six years ago. Okay. They had uh, met up at the Lion, the Bluegrass Festival in Lions, is where they met and um, started playing together. Uh, Craig had these original songs that he was singing in these bluegrass jams, which is common for people to call songs that everybody knows. Sure. But he was playing these songs that he had written that were really good and that really caught Chris's attention. Okay. So they got together and started messing around and playing some music until the sun came up, you know? Oh, and, yeah. And that's that's where the birth of Woodbelly began. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, Craig Patterson, he was the original guitar player. Awesome writer, great musician. Um, he moved on. He, he wanted to have a family up in the mountains, which is a beautiful thing to want. Hey! And, and he achieved that. Nothing goal. wrong with that. At all. No. Yeah. And, um, does he ever let him come down? What's that? Does he ever let him come down? <laughs> yeah. He does. <laughs> yeah. Well, good on you, sir. We need to, I guessing, I'm guessing you didn't have much to do with the naming of the band. But was it named Woodbelly because it's lighter than Lead Belly? <laughs> you know what? You're the second person that's gotten that. <laughs> I've heard several stories about how the band got its name, and I don't really know how the band got its name, but I, I do believe it has like something to do with Lead Belly. Okay, yeah. all right. First There's... guy that got it was a comedian, Jim Norton. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. There, there is something. There is a wood anniversary and a lead anniversary. It could also be that. Sure. I don't, I don't know. Sure. Two single guys now talking about love. Or <laughs> one, I shouldn't assume that you are. I can't let them all find out about Oh, that. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so do you now write songs for Woodbelt? Yeah, um... I've got some songs that I've written. Um, I mentioned earlier my dad being a musician. He's also a very talented writer. And uh, I've got some songs of his from back in the day and current ones that he's working on now that I've introduced to the band. Okay. And we play those too. Oh, nice. That one that I uh, played us in with is a song called Memories of You that my dad wrote. Really? Yeah. Wow. That... Your dad is an incredible <laughs> songwriter, actually. Thank you. That's amazing. So this show is called Old Faithful, and it's about guitars. And boy, howdy, do we ever have a guitar. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Sure. Yeah, this is a um, Thompson DMA. Okay. It's built by a company out of Sisters, Oregon. They're a smaller shop, and they, they, they stick to the hand-built okay. um, art that they do. I can only explain this thing as a piece of art because I'm I, I don't know I'm just absolutely in love with it and it's the finest guitar I've ever owned it is truly amazing thank you understated beauty it is a Martin copy we could say you, you could say that but it's got its own it's got its own thing own but aesthetically it's supposed to be a Martin all dreadnoughts are Martin copies. right yeah yeah you're right <laughs> absolutely yeah but this one um is special they contacted me and asked if they uh, if um, I wanted a guitar built, and I, I said please, absolutely. And they did this custom fly inlay on there. I was noticing that, and I hope we get a close up shot of that. Yeah, we can do that. I don't know which camera am I showing it to these people here. That's a salmon fly that Simon there at um, Thompson did, and you get close and look at it and see all the stone and and woodwork that he did in there. It's just absolutely incredible. That is amazing. Yeah, but uh, it's mahogany back and sides, and um, 
It kind of got like this tortoise looking binding on it. It's an Adirondack top. Okay. With the grain in it that you want. And <laughs> everything, it's everything. Is that a ebony or a rosewood fretboard? And I'm going to say it's ebony. I think it is too. Yeah. yeah. I'd say so. And how long have you had it now? I've had this since December 25th of 2021. December 25th is an important day. <laughs> yeah. I got very, very thankful to uh, um, have the family that I do. They went behind my back and purchased this for me, and I pulled it out from under the Christmas tree. No way. So that was one of the, that was the biggest surprise of, 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 a, of a very long time. I mean, it, it reminded me of getting that Martin. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But under the Christmas tree. Was it wrapped? Or? Yeah, it was wrapped up and everything. They had wow. it in a big old box tucked in the back so I couldn't, couldn't go back there and, and uh, so feel it out. does it have electronics? Um, yeah, I have a K&K &K Pure Mini okay. in there. It's a passive pickup that gives the most natural sound, in sure. my opinion. Or, if, or you mic it if you want it to sound the way it sounds. Sure, so. yeah. You have probably, at this point, performed with it. Yes, I just played um, at the Fox Theater in Boulder with my band Woodbelly this past, on the 12th of February. Um, Jeremy Garrett from the infamous String Dusters joined us on stage. And uh, I, 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 I want to say that's the first place I played live with this. Okay. But I could be lying. That was <laughs> pretty close. So sometimes you'll find an extremely well made guitar that sounds amazing on the couch or in the bedroom, will <laughs> be less than spectacular on stage. Is this one holding up this all is, the way? This is my workhorse. I, I'll play this for years. Did it cut right through where you wanted it to on stage? And um, Yeah, it's still a little tight because sure. it's brand new. Right? It's got some opening up to do, but I, I don't know. It sounds so good plugged in. Sure. You take a gamble plugging guitars in. You could be in a tin can or you could be in good shape. Right, Yeah. You know. Have you gotten to record with it yet? I did, actually. At Stout Studios, we did um, two recordings for this. We did a wedding last year where we performed a Casey and JoJo song <laughs> and a Chris Ledoux song. Okay. And that couple wanted us to record those in the studio. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's, it's cool to say that the first... Uh, First track that was recorded with this guitar was All My Life by Casey and JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, this is going to go down as one of the best episodes of the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Man. I'm glad to be here with you, man. Well, thank you so much for getting a hold of me. I've yeah. wanted this guy on the show since before there was a show, actually. <laughs> so this is a dream come true. Thank, thank you. you to Johnny. Thank you to you. Do we have anything else we need to talk about? Um, what strings do you use on it? Does this have a name? I have not named it yet. Uh -huh. Um, maybe call it Ed. Ed. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, comment this video, best name. <laughs> I'll consider it. I'll consider hey, it in the comments. I like that. All right. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. Um, do a G run for good measure. You bet. Absolutely. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> do you want to do another song, or is that good? Sure, I'll play you guys okay. another tune. Let me do my little thing. Remember my sponsorship with Trask Hay LLC, large round and square bales, and it is in fact snowing outside. You might have a hay cup. Custom haying services. Call Joe Trask, 515-0858. Ladies and gentlemen, um, boy. Who, I should have thought of this beforehand, shouldn't I? Tony Rice has passed away. From heaven, Tony Rice says, change your strengths. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Tom Norton, everyone. Bye. 
Thank you, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>